Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. We are live. Welcome to the Market Update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. This show is brought to you by tokenmetrics.com. If you need to make money in crypto and you need a roadmap in crypto, subscribe to this channel. Turn on the alerts bell, particularly in this environment, so you know when we're going live. And above all, if you like the content, please give us a thumbs up and hit that like button. All right, let's see who's here. Okay, Drew X with like a worried face emoji first on the stream. Very appropriate. Nathan, Chase, Peter, hi. Okay. Icons, Aiken is here. Okay. Right. What's up, Bill? From Nashville. Nashville in the house. Okay. Somebody says, go Red Sox. Right. Corona in Alabama. How you doing? Germany, Kenya. All right. Everybody is here today. All right. <laughs> Bitcoin is not a hedge against inflation anymore. That would seem so. San Diego Padres fans, right? New York City is here. Okay. So what are we going to do today? Well, I'm going to spend a little bit of time, not too much, pounding the table on failed rallies in down markets, right? Yesterday, I showed a chart and I said, we had two failed rallies. And yes, the second one was epic, right? It was like up 3% in the morning, winding up down 3%, pretty much a game over phenomenon. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about Bitcoin and Ethereum. Then we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about support and resistance in like your bigger altcoins. Then we're going to go through legacy in the middle. Okay, we're going to talk about what to get out of, and then we're going to give you a list of what to try to pick from to try to find what's going to go up in this market, right? So basically, it's what to get out of and then what to look for in terms of opportunities if there is such a thing in this market. We think there is, particularly in the DeFi space, right? And it's, it's going to be small cap, right? Because big caps are following equities. All right, let's see who else is here. Baltimore pumping the chat. Thank you. India up late at night. Okay, where is the bottom? We'll, we'll talk about that. Okay, Thailand is here. All right, I'm glad you like the hat. Thank you. My daughter picked out the blue one and I picked up the red one for bigger down days. Okay, Bill, please 100X our portfolio today instead of the usual 10X. I will do my best. Okay. Poland is also here. All right. Welcome. Stay safe out there. Don't get, don't get nuked. All right. Here we go. This is your market update. Okay. GTFO. All right. <laughs> I'm going to let you Google what that means, but that's where my head is at after a failed rally. Okay. When you get a failed rally and then you get follow through, particularly since like right now, equities look to be doing worse than crypto, right? Which is just fine with me. But again, you have to be asking yourself, if I got small altcoins and I don't believe them in them anymore, or if I'm loaded up to the gills in crypto, right? And I don't want to give it up, okay? I would, I would reevaluate and think about moving into stable coins. Today is the last day for KYC, for AstroDAO, okay? A, a DeFi platform not owned by Token Metrics, but one which we have supported. Token Metrics customers, you got to get in your email today 
to get KYC in. Now, for Earth Day, right, we have 25% off, right, until the 24th, okay? Every plant purchased, right, Token Metrics will donate a tree to be planted in the Amazon rainforest, okay? That does not include the VIP plants. Now, here's the value proposition, right? Save the planet, save a tree, and get access to that ranking list, which we will go through later. Okay, so we're going through our rankings, trying to find altcoins that our AI is going, hey, check this out. So even if the market gets wrecked, there still may be altcoins trying to like move up to the top of the pile. So having those rankings alone, because frankly, and we, and we said this yesterday, I have no idea how you're going to make money in crypto unless you're hunting for small altcoins that could really get that pop. Okay, so the Amazon River Basin is a big region with 2 billion trees and it's home to 30% of the plant and animal life. So that's where our tree will go or your tree will go, okay, if you subscribe and take advantage of the coupon. Now, the dollar, okay, it's like the doom index. The dollar index has been reflecting distress in both the yen and the euro, okay? Now you can't really tell, it doesn't look like a disaster other than the fact that the dollar is on a steady uptrend. But the fact that yesterday we talked about them running stops, just love they love to do in the currency market, the fiat. And now the dollar index is moving higher and it's probably gonna go above 102, okay? Right, you're probably looking at it took out the bottom in this channel and it's probably going to take out the top. I'm also looking at dollar yen. That's US JPY. So dollar up, yen down. You know, right now, dollar yen is at 128. And if dollar yen takes out 130, then legacy is going to come unglued. I don't know if we have to worry about this right now, but obviously, what's going on in legacy is a byproduct of two things, three things stronger dollar, right? higher rates because of bad Fed policy, okay? And, and volatility in things like the yen and the euro. Okay, Bitcoin on a two-week chart. This is a new fad, We're looking at two-week charts. Each bar is two weeks. So there was the failure at 46,700, right? There's a head and shoulders top. It's clearer on a daily chart. And since the all-time high, right, last year, it's pretty simple. The first leg down was A, the uptick to 46,700 was B. And then as we have discussed in prior streams, there's that unpredictable C wave down. Okay, the bottom of the regression channel is 28K. Guys are talking about this on, on YouTube. Just like one small guy that has, you know, a big Twitter following. And he, he makes fun of the rest of YouTube about this. So, you know, don't, don't play around with this. Don't, okay? Like, if you got to adjust your position, you got to do it now. Because, I mean, can you imagine, like, stocks could easily go down 15 20%. No problem. No problem. So, if stocks go down 15 to 20%, where's Bitcoin going to be? This could have nothing to do with Bitcoin. It could all have to do with legacy and equities, which you got to remember, a risk asset is a risk asset. Okay, what's a non-risk asset? Well, cash and stable coins. So if risk assets get hurt, it can happen to Bitcoin. Now let's talk about levels. Okay, 40,200. This is from our quant group. So every day they use the AI and the machine learning to identify relevant levels. So if Bitcoin is below 40,200, the risk is now 36,500. So I smell a grotesque Friday, that's the 22nd, and I'm even more worried about what happens Sunday night, right? When everybody goes, oh my God, in, in legacy, they go, oh my God, equities are going to get wrecked. We better sell crypto. Okay, I'm worried about that today, and I'm worried about that on Sunday night. Now, in ETH, which actually holds up pretty good today, 
honestly. But 29.78 is a key support need. 29.78 holds, then maybe it's just an equities puke. But if 29.78 gives way, you're looking at 26.87. There's kind of nobody home below this market, right? Now, just so you don't freak out, there is intraday support at 29.26. So this 2,900-ish area might hold. It might. These are um, a special DeMarc moving average bands, okay? Uh, I'm using them on intraday charts. They seem to be pretty effective. So 29.26 is support. 30.12 is resistance. This is for your tactical viewpoint. So this is April 22nd. So this is not going to be good a week from now, but it could be useful today. So the way I would do this is above 3,012, you know, you can postpone worrying. If this thing is at below 2,926, you could be looking at a trend change. All right, so... Yes, there's support, right? But you do have to be careful because up below 2926, it's 2600. Okay, just a reminder, not the pile on, okay? The month of April, which has, you know, roughly a week left in it, is a 13 top on the monthly chart. This, this took effect on the failed rally, right? ETH was back and forth, and it was annoying, and, but it wasn't that bad, okay? This is sell in May and go away. Because if that 13 top kicks in, and you have this thing gets rolling in May, right? You have to be careful. So I brought this up at the beginning of the month. Then I kind of left it alone because of the range trade. Now I'm bringing it back, okay? People who've been watching the stream and watching the DeMarc work know that there's a reason why that 13 is highlighted. For anybody new to the stream, you know, Tom DeMarc was a quant technical analyst. And when he counts, or his system called sequential, counts a certain set of conditions for the 13th time, like, I don't know, the high is higher than the high two days ago, whatever, or two months ago, okay? When you get to a 13, you're looking at a mature trend and you're watching for reversal. Doesn't mean you can't get one more thrust in the direction of the trend, but you got to be careful. I'm not playing around when I'm telling you about this. Now, near, okay. Okay, not lying, this sucks, but 1573 was a level we were looking at. It's not holding. 1515 is a smaller level on intraday charts. That's not shown. All right. We think fundamentally they're going to announce a stable coin to compete with Luna. All right. Unfortunately, it looks like a lot of people have got that trade on and we're keeping our fingers crossed that 15 holds or that it will go down. Okay. And then come screaming back. All right. Hate to say it, but the best support is all the way down at 1320. No joke. When I saw this this morning, when our quant guy sent this over, I was like, oh my God, where is the rest of this market going to be if near is at 1320? I don't even want to think about it. Okay, Avalanche, we have discussed this at length. Okay, 82 is resistance. And Avalanche hasn't even showed the ability to go back up and test that. And every day that we run these numbers, the support below the market kind of it gets it gets lower. So first it was at 64, and now it's at 52. All right. Now, again, that's probably a little extreme, but I don't think you want to get caught some of these over-owned layer ones. The story last year was that no one owned them. Now I'm starting to get worried that everybody owns them, which is why I want to shift over to hunting for small coins with the token metrics ranking system. Yes, I work there, but when you look at this, I mean, this thing is below resistance and there's no material support. So do you want to belong this or do you want to go try to find a small coin? 
Okay, Solana, it's the same deal. So painful, right? 105 was like a very important level, right? Our original stop on our bullish idea was 117. And that feels like a million years ago and a million miles away. Solana cannot get back above 105. 81 something is next. All right. Now, Polkadot, if you want to hear something good, Polkadot's got support at 1704. So Polkadot's got good support here, okay? Because Polkadot never went up. So I have a hard time being negative Polkadot, especially the closer it gets to 1704. Now, let's look at monkey market, aka stocks. As you can see up here with the squeeze, naturally on the ES1, that's the S&P futures chart, they had to get everyone out, right? They had to stop out all the shorts before it just got dropped. I saw, I saw a headline about a fire in a Russian chemical plant, the biggest one. Subtle reminder that trouble does not make an appointment. So now we got to start worrying about war escalation, especially if chemical fires are occurring inside big facilities in Russia. And of course, don't forget that central banks everywhere have screwed up on inflation. That has got to start to take in a, to hurt equities. I'm showing really the minimum down trade is, is like 2% <clears throat> to the bottom of this regression band on short-term charts. Now, if you look at a bigger picture, if you look at S&P futures on a daily, you know, you could be looking at 6% downside as S&P moves from say 4,300-ish down to 4,000. I mean, there's, there's absolutely no reason why S&P can't trade down there, given the fact that, you know, the interest rate news is bad, the fiat currency news is bad, the war news is bad. I mean, you know. Stocks don't trade anything until it becomes painfully obvious. And now it has become painfully obvious and crypto has to pay for their sins, unfortunately. Now, a debacle we haven't talked about is European equities. Okay, this was like the big worry trade when everyone was afraid about, uh, you know, how European banks were going to be impacted by Russia. Now, European stocks don't look terrible but they have not been able to get back above the 62% retracement of their recent up move. So if there's a problem with the Euro or there's a problem in their financial system that hasn't hit the tape yet, there is a lot of downside in European equities. So if American equities go, European equities could go because they're at resistance and they, have, they show no sign of being able to get back above it, okay? Okay, S&P, SPY, we talked about 447 as resistance. I'm looking at support at 420, okay? So I talked about 4,300 S&P, okay? Stocks have got room to go lower. Now, as an additional reminder to complete the total piling on, the orange is volatility in the yen, so... Saving you the long story, there's a problem with the Japanese yen. The Japanese yen is not the Russian ruble. It's the third biggest economy in the world. It's a huge financial system, and the yen has tanked, raising Japanese yen volatility, as in fear. So fear has picked up in the yen. That's orange line. Purple is fear in equities. U.S. equities, that's the purple line. As you can see, they often follow one another. So fear in fiat creates fear in equities, creates problem for speculative assets. Remember ARKK from yesterday? Don't forget about that. That's just crash city. Okay, VIX, again, fear in equities. Yesterday, I said, Watch out for the burst above 20. Lo and behold, there's a burst above 20. Now, 25 is resistance. So I guess that's some good news. But if VIX goes through 25 on Monday, forget it, right? It's like 
equities are done. But, you know, it has to do that first, so we don't have to completely freak out. But if VIX leaves its normal range, right, the, the message of the orange and purple line, even if you don't understand it, the message of this is that fear in equities could leave the range it's been in, okay, since mid-March. So if there's a new wave of fear, okay, that means a new wave of selling in risk assets. I mean, Bitcoin, as of this, as of this report on the 22nd, was actually like doing worse than ETH. So hedging, selling, it just feels like hedge funds are unloading. Now, speaking of hedge funds unloading, I didn't put the news up, but did anybody hear the news about a big hedge fund puking out Netflix stock as people, you know, react to higher gas prices by canceling everything that moves? So if hedge funds are going to puke out Netflix, what else are they going to puke out of? What other stocks? What other investments? What other junk bonds? Think about it. Okay, back to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is trading in a downward sloping range. It's not a total disaster, but you know, if it's a if it's below 39,800, you could easily see 37k. Just because it's trading in this downward sloping box, it went to the top of the box at 42,000. We talked about the dangers of the failed rally. Thank God I don't have to talk about that anymore because we're here, right? So <clears throat> You got the failed rally at the top. Now you're probably going to have a gigantic stop fishing exercise down to 37,000. Okay, let's talk about highly speculative altcoins. So when the history of this market or this crypto, this crypto phase is written, people will remember that the most speculative and interesting altcoins mooned right as the top was being made. So Ape either had retail FOMO or massive short covering, take it to the top of a regression band, take it to hidden pivot resistance, which I took off the chart. But the bottom line is, right, FOMO is the road to ruin. The road to ruin. I actually had somebody give me a nice compliment on my Twitter, and I retweeted it. Really appreciate that guy and his positive feedback, and I'm glad I'm having an impact. FOMO is doom. Okay. If you want to buy something, you want to buy ape. Okay. Let it go to 12. Then look at it. Okay. You can't buy stuff when it's up. Cause if you've done that this year, you got killed. And if you did that this week, you could have been totally wrecked. Okay. Step in GMT. All right. The guys who found this at token metrics, they got our private group in early. All right. The NFTs and the workouts are good. Speculating in the token, no bueno, right? Uh, two and a half is probably the next level. The fact that it stopped at 376 should tell you something, right? In other words, speculation in very speculative stuff. So if you're doing speculative squared, don't do it. And if you're caught, if you got caught, it's okay. It's okay, right? In other words, I got caught, I have a bad trade, or I didn't get out, or whatever, okay? Have a really short memory, short memory. It's like, okay, this didn't work out, or this is not working out, now what do I do? Okay, Luna, this is going to be a big deal. So, will people want stable coins? Will, will this be the one coin market? Yesterday, I kind of indicated that I don't think so. That's kind of bold, right? Resistance is at 98, okay? Not a big fan of buying this when it's up. Just saying. I mean, not that it, this is not good, okay? But I just don't want to buy it at 98, okay? Here's why. Total three, that's total crypto market cap without Bitcoin and Ethereum. So we're talking altcoins, right? You look at this regression band and it's just traveling in this sideways band. It can go down 5%. And that Williams oscillator is just starting to go negative. 
which is which can be an ugly point. So you got to be really careful, right, about speculative assets here. Now, even Zcash. So we have talked about the privacy narrative that held up yesterday. So the failed rally wasn't as big of a fail in privacy. But the thing is, do you want to buy Zcash at the top of a regression band? I mean, has that worked in any coin we've looked at for the last 20 minutes? So I'm not hating on Zcash, but I don't think I want to buy it at 170. Okay, Monero, right? Now, this is the daily chart. I found some DeMarc resistance at 280. I was talking 300. I talked about support at 250. All right. This looks like people are headed for the door. Right. I mean, if you made a bunch of money in this, I mean, like this and like three altcoins or four altcoins were, were places where you could make money on the way up. Now, could this be a safe haven? Maybe. Okay. When, when things start to blow up and you're looking at selling May and go away, when someone says the word safe haven, hide under your desk. Actually, sell first, then hide under your desk. Now, I don't know if this is a safe haven or whether or not there's like a fundamental trade going on with privacy. So I'm just going to leave it as 280 is resistance. Now, Coinbase's stock. I had been using Galaxy Digital, and I'm, I'm starting to wonder if Galaxy Digital is the indicator for the upside and Coinbase is the indicator for the downside. Oh, my God. This thing has been getting wrecked like for two weeks. Now, I know they came out with the NFT platform, right? And you would think that, I don't know, they wouldn't punish the stock for that because I think NFTs are actually going to do a lot better than most altcoins. But you know what, folks? Nobody, they are pounding this thing. I'm afraid this thing's going to go to 126. And as time goes out, the bottom of that regression band gets lower and lower. So I don't want to hate on it at the bottom, just like I don't want to buy it at the top. Jesus, can you believe what they're doing to this thing? And that's the market update. All right, now let's get out of this. Let's get out of this. Check the chat. Steve says Ave is still very strong, okay? That's cool, right? I, I, I'm expecting that people are going to be looking for somewhere to hide, right? Money has got to go somewhere. Notice is like, you know, this is killing me. I got it. One inch is killing me. Okay. Let, we'll look at it. Okay. Okay. Someone's watching Kava. All right. So it looks like everyone out there is welcoming each other in the chat. Okay. We've also got helium. All right. So let's go. So Driftless wants to know, where do you hide? Let's look at it this way. I think you can trade the small altcoins. We're going to go into that later. Okay. Um, I think the idea is not to use the word hide. It's to use the word preserve cash, preserve capital. In other words, if you go to stable coins, you're not hiding. Or if you get a portion of your portfolio in stable coins, you're not hiding. Okay. You're trying to make sure that in either August or October, you have a truckload of capital and your sanity to be able to get invested. Okay. Let's get busy. Let's do the market update within the market update. So I'm going to bring up, I'm going to bring up the DeMarc work and then we can check that out to see what's happening right now. Okay, so let's just do a review. ETH holds up like a champ. Near does pretty good. Okay, so 
you know, S and P going back to like an 89 minute chart. Okay. It is still pretty much getting wrecked. Okay. With like five or 6% downside. So no sign of anything letting up in S and P. Okay. Bitcoin getting wrecked with ETH holding up. I don't even know what to make of that. Okay. Now let's go briefly before I go to the DeMarc work and we'll talk more about this, but we've turned a token metrics watch list. So what we're doing is we have research analysts combing through the site, looking for coins that have big jumps in their grade. Now, I guess when you have a market debacle, okay, most of these coins are not going to be exciting, but it can be interesting to look what is up on a down day? Okay. So TCT, okay, on an 89 minute chart, okay, it mooned. That probably is what got the attention of our system. It's come off and now it's trying to go green again. Okay. Lossless is another coin, okay, that I know we like fundamentally. And you, I think you can see people trying to buy the dip. Now, if the market gets wrecked, all right. Now, ref finance is something we also looked at. All right. This may be connected to the near ecosystem. And this is an 89 minute chart. Now, why am I showing you 89 minute charts of things like ref and LSS? Well, because folks, what you can get out of this stuff is like trading gains, right? Like back here, you had a positive market, but you know, you had to move from like two and a half to four. Right. And if this trend continues and the market doesn't get totally destroyed, you might get a move from three and a half to seven. Now, how will you know if that is, you know, reasonable? Well, you have to make sure you stay tuned with tokenmetrics.com. Okay. Because I don't know how else to make money in a crypto market that's being victimized by a legacy debacle, right? So when you look at the trading view on this, right? Let me get over here and go full screen. When you look at the trading view on this, okay? Obviously there's resistance at four, right? It really hasn't been able to sustain itself there. But the question is, will people buy the dip? Okay, let's go to the summary page. trying to find the grade. Okay, not seeing the grade right here. Okay, let's go let's go to the ratings page to see if it's there on the ratings page. All right, so this is the ratings page where all the top coins are going to be found, right? And I've got guys checking to see which coins right? Move up. So this may be a bug, but the point is we are pulling coins from this list, right? And trying to deliver it to you via trading view. Okay. So you can see what's going up and what's not. Now, alpha zero is something guys in our premium group had me looking at this morning. So it's pretty clear that as they hammer this thing lower, right? Alpha zero from gate IO is something people are looking at. Okay. You want to buy stuff when it's down and you're either going to get out quickly if the, if the trading costs allow it. So you're looking for possibly green ink on a day when everything's red. Uh, honestly, until equities close, I wouldn't be in a hurry. Okay. But if you use your phone, right, you take a picture, let me see if I can get the spreadsheet up. Okay, so the REF grade is 86.33. Okay, I'm going to try one more time to bring that up. All right, I can't see it here but let's take the producer's word for it. Let me see if I can find it on the ratings page one more time.
All right, technical difficulties there on my end, most likely. Bottom line is we're looking for this stuff. We're looking, looking, looking for small altcoins. Now, let me see if I can bring up the spreadsheet and then we will go into request-based work. Don't worry, that is coming. Basically, what you're witnessing now is you're watching the new altcoin overtime. We're essentially doing it on the fly. Okay. Hopefully, you can see the spreadsheet on the screen. Okay. So, for today, let's go to the view. All right. So the research analyst for today identified LISC, KeepCoin, right? GRS, REI, and PSL, okay? So over here were the changes, right, in the grade. Now, we're also looking at a watch list. These are all of the tokens that we've picked up so far, all right? And we're watching to see how they're doing. Now, a lot of them are getting hammered. Okay, but some of them aren't. Okay, Secret Finance, Pickle, Tornado Cash are still up. So the, I don't know, hopefully you can see what we're doing here, all right? And you can take a picture of it on your phone. Let me see if I can blow this up even more. Okay, so it shows up better on TV. The bottom line is we're telling you LSK, KPC, REI, et cetera, and then they have it set up. Okay, so I can actually go to the site, okay, and look at LSK. Okay, brief technical difficulties, you get the point. These are the coins to research, okay, as in do your own research, as in not bet the rent money, okay, so... Don't do that. Now, with altcoin overtime, the new version of altcoin overtime done, I want to go directly into DeMarc work. Okay, so Bitcoin and Ethereum. Let's take a look at, say, a four-hour chart. So here's the four-hour chart of Bitcoin. There's support at 39,000. Okay, let's hope it holds, honestly. Okay, ETH has got support at 2895. Let's hope that holds, okay? Now, on the daily chart, you know, it's 2,900. So nobody wants to sell ETH below 3,000. Can you blame them? I don't. I can't blame them, okay? Let's go to the shorter term time frame, okay? Somebody's saying one inch. All right, let me get on that. Okay, 29.26 in ETH. Here's near showing support at 15. Thank God. Right. Okay. Let's look at one inch because someone's dying in one inch. Okay. I'm keeping everything to like a 90 minute time frame. Okay, still waiting for one inch to come up here. Okay, here's one inch. So the best support is $1.49. Right now, it looks to be pinned at another support point near $1.53. So if you're in this, you're essentially praying You're praying that the old ceiling is now the floor. So you want a dollar fifty-three and a dollar forty-nine to hold in one inch. Okay. Then if that's the case, that means people are, you know, minus this puke from Sunday, people are willing to actually turn around and grab it. Let's look at the daily chart. Okay. And again, this is why you're dying because it can't get above 155. 
right? So one inch is like pinned between 148 and 155. And it's obvious everyone is trying to sell the rally, which is why you have to be careful of what failed rallies, right? Okay, XRP. We want to welcome everybody that comes in for the request portion of the show. Okay, we want to thank everybody who comes in for the PowerPoint portion of the show. And hopefully everyone's getting adjusted to the new altcoin overtime where we're giving you stuff from the token metrics rankings. Okay, so XRP has resistance at 73 cents. It tries to get above it and it gets sold. Uh, you can tell people want to buy this. The DeMarc 9 bottom is coming, right? Upside is probably 75 cents. Right. And, and I'm only doing stuff on like 90 minute charts now because nothing else makes sense. Even though you may be watching this video over the weekend, like this thing, the last three streams, I mean, it has changed while I have been talking to the point where I have to like keep track of it. Okay. Flux. You know, there's a lesson in, in, in one inch and XRP, right? If they give you gratification on the upside, you better take it. You better take it, right? If you sit there and stare at a rally and go, oh, I'm okay, you might not be. All right, the good news in flux is that there's kind of a double support point with this moving average band down here at 136. The bad news is, Looking at this short-term DeMarc work, you probably are going to look at a test of 136, okay? Immutable X. Okay, Illuvium, don't forget Metaverse. Not going not gonna to forget Metaverse for sure. Okay, so IMX, right? Decent support at a dollar eighty. So between a dollar eighty and a dollar seventy-five, there's decent support. There's a nine bottom pending, which probably means you're going to get a bottom. You're going to get a counter trend rally. So we talked about this, right? So maybe the Friday debacle ends soon, and the next debacle you might have to worry about is Sunday night. So. You know, if you look at a daily chart of this, okay, Fernando, have a good weekend. We appreciate you. Okay, so there's a lot of support at 181. Okay, so we're going back to the 90 minute. Okay. Not forgetting about the metaverse. Okay, let's look at Alluvium and let's talk about the metaverse. Okay, so Alluvium on this 90 minute band that I've got going on here, you've got 504 and 507. So that's where this rally started from. And it looks like Metaverse basically wants to just go right back where it came from and have this range from 550 to 504. So you get this kind of like final heave lower, you get the bounce, and then we see next weekend. Okay, spell, not next weekend, on Monday. Okay, so you're at a DeMarc 3 on spell. You have support down here at 0.0387. So I don't know. This doesn't look terrible. Okay. This doesn't look terrible on a short term chart. It's just basically a giant range. Every time it gets to the bottom of the band, the band may be tough to see. Let me see if I can do an on the fly color adjustment.
Okay, there's an on-the-fly color adjustment for one of them. Okay, let me get the other one. Stay with me. Because basically, I want you to see these bands. Okay, so here's the bottom of the band, right? Down here in spell, right? And if you look at this, this is just like... Bottom of the band, run stops, back up. Run stops, back down. You know what I'm saying? Like, all they do in these coins is run stops above and below this new DeMarc-based moving average system that I'm looking at, which seems to be a lot more useful, particularly for tactical training. Tactical trading. Okay, yes, ETH is doing okay. That is good. That's probably what's holding up. That's probably the only thing that's keeping crypto from coming unglued. But again, you know, uh, a guy on Twitter said this. Every time you celebrate relative outperformance in crypto, that's usually when crypto gets killed. Okay. Um, Casper stopped at the bottom of the moving average line. Okay, but you have to be careful of the slope of this thing, right? Like when the moving average system here starts to slope lower, Casper can be subject to give up trades. So it's 0 0.0038. Wait. Sorry. Okay, it's okay, it's 0 0.08. So again, people are buying the dip. Right, right around eight cents, you can see that there's a hesitation, right? People don't want to liquidate down here. People would rather buy. I understand that, okay? The thing is, and again, there's good support here. We've talked about this near eight cents. So that's okay, right? It's good support near eight cents. And maybe it's not a problem in the smaller coins, right? Stuff that's beat up, I don't mind looking at. Okay, Cody, C-O-T-I. Okay, so I wish I had happier news at the tactical level. So it's below support at 22.78, right? It's got the moving average holding it up here but it's been kind of tracking the moving average all the way down. Let's try to go to a four hour chart to get a better, more, a better read. Okay. So on the good news, the good news is that this looks like the Easter Sunday puke, right? It went below its four hour version massively, and then it came back above it. So I think there's some hope in some of these altcoins that have gotten destroyed. Right? Some of the stuff that's gotten destroyed may bounce over the weekend. Okay. Somebody was asking for chain link. Okay. Somebody likes on the fly TA. I appreciate that. Okay. So chain link, again, this is the four hour chart, the bottom of its moving average band. Okay. So. You know, it, it's hard to hate on some of this stuff that has gotten destroyed. Now, that said, okay, that said, you know, the 90-minute chart has been working. There's a, a mid-range band here around 1369. So, on one hand, it doesn't look terrible, right? But maybe the fact that it doesn't look terrible is going to prevent people from reducing risk. I'm not necessarily saying you have to bail out a chain link, but if you own chain link, would you want to see it go down to 1321? Would you want to see it where it started the rally from in April 18th? Because if equities get wrecked on Monday, that's exactly what's going to happen. So chain link is fine. Chain link is still in its range, right? I mean, it's really, it's really closer to the bottom of the range, obviously. So no reason to freak out, but I can paint scenarios 
where there can be one final heave here either today or Monday. Okay. What about Zillica? This is kind of the big question, right? Can you buy the dip in things that have moved? It actually worked in Zcash. So this is the 90 minute chart of Zillica. We're headed for a DeMarc nine bottom right on top of the moving average system. So there's also a warning sign here. So my guess is let's try a fib. Let's just try to get a retracement level. Okay, so my guess is there's going to be a short-term bounce in Zillica. How long that lasts, I don't know, but there's a lot of support in this range. Okay, this was like where the last rally took off from on a 90-minute chart. So I'm guessing there's going to be a bounce in Zillica. Now look, if Zillica bounces and stabilizes, that's good. If Zillica bounces and fails... I mean, this, uh, this to me is the top metaverse play, right? Metaverse as a service. How do you get involved in the metaverse? So there's support at point, point 0.109. So right at that 11 cent level, right? This is the four hour chart. And again, you're headed for a nine bot. So, you know, push me into a corner, buy or sell Zillica. I would say if there's a, a, a final puke, right? That support would hold. And then you reevaluate Monday. And again, this is all trading plays. Total two and D5 perp. Okay, so total two is undoubtedly being held up by ETH today because total two is Bitcoin and Ethereum. I'm sorry, is total crypto market cap without Bitcoin. Okay, sorry about the gymnastics. So this is total two on a four-hour chart. Now, again, like ETH, total two has been moving in this downward sloping band. And based on the way this is trading, I don't see any reason why it can't move to the bottom end of the band, which is the even number at 1 trillion. So I think you have to start asking yourself what happens if ETH has to catch up with the rest of the market on the downside. No one wants to sell ETH below 3K, but you know you have to ask yourself these questions. Right, You don't want to walk in here on Monday and be like, oh, I should have made adjustments on Friday. Right, Because no doubt people in equities aren't going to make this mistake, especially since they just all got squeezed out of their shorts. All these guys who got squeezed out in equities, they have to reload their hedges. Remember, equities is basically a long-only community. So... They don't have the liquidity to sell the actual stocks. So they got to use that futures contract to hedge. Okay, Rune, there's support at 855. Okay, not a particularly exciting candle there. Sort of seems like it's breaking. Okay, now if you look at the tactical view, there is good moving average support at eight and a half. So maybe what happens in Rune is a repeat of Sunday where they puke it, it goes, you know, seven, eight, nine, and maybe there's an opportunity to grab it at 828. Okay, this like Zcash, you are catching the falling knife. Okay, you also have to keep in mind that this 13 top here, okay, remember when I talked about short-term signals? short-term tops becoming long-term tops. So I'm telling you right now, if you get the nine bottom in Rune, you want to see this thing turn around and start going back up again, right? You want to see it. 
Okay, this has been like one of the top plays of the year. This, Zillica, all these moonshots, right? Question is, can you buy the big dips and make money? So far in Rune, the answer to that is no. You bought the dip, it went up, but you got unwound fast. So if this is A, B, C, there could be an unpredictable flush. Now that may represent opportunity, but you want to, you know, show me the money, right? Show it, show it, go down to support or stop everyone out and then come back. Okay, dash, can't even look. Okay, so Dash is trying to make a nine bottom, right, near support. So Dash is kind of ahead of all these other cryptos in trying to make a nine bottom, right? There's a nine bottom here. Now, what you have to be careful of with nines is that it may not be a nine bottom. Yeah, there's a ton of support at 101, right? And there's support underneath it at 100, okay? But you have to be careful that there's no counter trend rally and that the trend resumes. Now, on this 90-minute chart, again, these things are so range-bound, right? Nine bottom, up. Nine bottom, up. Nine top, sideways, down, right? This is just what's been going on in crypto. So all this stuff that's been destroyed, all these altcoins, you know, there's support on intraday tactical charts. Where there's no support is on, like, the daily and even the weekly charts, so which one's going to win? My guess is there's going to be like a puke today. It'll hold over the weekend. And then Sunday night is when, you know, you have to be somewhat concerned about the, oh my God. Okay. VRA. Okay. So VRA has got support just below two cents, 0.019, right? Now, most of these coins are going to look the same. Obviously, if these support points get taken out, how are you going to do it? How are you going to play this? Well, most likely, everyone's going to panic when they get taken out. That's either today or Sunday. So there's going to be panic. And then the question after the panic is, does it come back? Right? Because after the failed rally, I mean, I have no illusions, people. I appreciate you all out there, but I've been doing this for a long time. When I say to Ant, when I say to traders, be careful of the failed rally, okay? Usually, usually they don't listen, which is okay, because they want to stay long, well, particularly in equities, right? And then what happens is the market's down and at support, and they don't want to sell. So what do I tell people, not, not hating on VRA, because there is support here. There is a reason for this to bounce over the weekend. But here's a general rule. When should you sell when you don't want to? Either after the initial move down or on any dead cat bounce thereafter. If you feel a strong desire to not sell, change your position. Not investment advice, right? So on a four-hour chart, Stellar looks okay, right? It's holding. The, it went below this band on the Easter Sunday puke and came back. And, of course, took out the top of the band. And all everybody is doing in this market is fishing for stops, okay? So there probably will be a stop fishing exercise in this either later tomorrow or Sunday. Support is at just below 19 cents, okay? And then Monday we'll wake up or – We'll come in on, on Monday, and we will figure out what to do from there. But basically, a lot of this looks the same, right? Like final puke up, and then, you know, next down move will be, you know, if there is a next down move, right? Like we can go down and then back up again, and we're looking, we're not looking for the failed rally. We're looking for, Bounce, no bounce. So after a failed rally, everybody goes, oh, well, I'll just sell the next rally. And then the market goes, guess what? You're not getting one. Okay, this is the, this is the pain of bear markets. 
right? This is the pain of either bear markets or ranges, okay? So when everybody wants to sell a rally, you don't get one. What you may get is a flush and then a return and then have it sit. And then you have to make a decision Sunday night, okay? Okay, the support in our weave is at 27.84. And looking at the 90 minute, it looks like they want to test it because every time this thing goes up, sorry to say it, it looks like people are selling it. Like no one wants to, no one wants to, it's like they're by the dip, the, the sellers crush it. And as soon as they're done selling, they just bring it back. So you can tell people are actively selling, right? That's the bad news, but they're not pushing it lower. So maybe they can push it lower with the rest of the market. Or these people who came in and ripped it up have got control. Honestly, we don't know yet. What we do know is if they, if they hit it to support at 27.84, that might represent capitulation by the bulls and an opportunity to get in or at least wait to see what happens. Most likely you're already in. You're just painfully waiting for something good to happen. So hopefully it never gets down there. But if it does, that's going to be the test. Now, if it doesn't, then the people who created these green candles are in control on the market. Yes, and somebody's commenting on this. By the way, I haven't been saying it, but if you're watching the video, you're watching the recording, the like button for On Demand TA, all right? Okay, Cardano. Find this trade particularly painful because I actually thought this was going to be okay. And I don't know if it is okay or not. Okay, so... You know, Cardano had resistance at 97 cents at a dollar. It had support at 90. It has not paid to sell it when it's down. Okay. But that said, right, on the 90 minute chart, if this is, you know, this could have five more 90 minute periods of downside. So, you know, I, I am afraid of a larger puke. The good news in Cardano is that. It bounced off strong support at 89 cents on the four hour chart and it's below this moving average. So, you know, Cardano normally doesn't spend a lot of time below these bands, at least in this rangy environment. So basically if you're in Cardano, you're cheering for it to come back above 90 cents. So with ETH outperforming, you're, you're, I know this is strange, but in Cardano, you're actually cheering for ETH. Let's just go back to ETH on the 90 minute chart. So here's the, here's a mini bounce in ETH on the 90 minute chart. So we're going to see if this rally is going to flip this to mark work or whether you're going to have, you know, another 24 hours of smash mouth. Okay. I think in crypto and in ETH and all these altcoins, you got to be careful today. You got to be careful after equities close today. And I think you got to be careful on Sunday night before equities open. Okay. Okay. So Dean wants to know where we would have to be in Bitcoin to get a trend reversal going up again. Hmm. That's a good question. So let's go to the Bitcoin daily chart. So I think in order to get this going again, you have to see this like 39K hold this support. So if you look at the bands in Bitcoin, they're a little narrower on the daily charts. So you would need to see Bitcoin hold 39K and essentially come ripping back above 40,800. Now in the PowerPoint I had, I believe that's where we had resistance. So. I think you have to be taken out 41 K in order to say, all right, well, maybe this is all right. Okay. Routine cheese, 40,700 needs to be reclaimed. That, that does make sense. That does make sense. So I do agree with saying, all right, you know, if we don't have to worry, what's the level? Okay. And I would also have in my back pocket, you know, the information 
Like for example, nine bottom in near is very hopeful. So here comes the counter trend bounce in near. Now let's see, let's see what happens. Okay. Let's see what happens, right? Is this a bottom at, at the bottom of the range? Like it was at Easter. I don't know. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Okay. KDA, our friends looking for KDA. And then I want to go back to the token metrics watch list to see if anything bouncing on the bounce. Okay. So KDA looking at a four hour chart. So KDA is in this downward sloping channel, right? Uh, it hits the top, it fails. The bottom of the channel is at four and a half. So I guess for KDA, you definitely want four and a half should hold and you're praying that 503 does hold. Um, you know, I, I think there are two strategies here. You got a GTFO and adjust risk on a, on any type of rally. That's one way to look at it. Okay. Or you got to find support and pray. So back to the token metrics watch list over here is anything standing out. Let's just check where REF is. Okay. So REF has gotten back down to the bottom end of this channel. So if REF is good, it'll hold. If it's not, it won't. But, you know, I didn't want to buy this up here at 397. I definitely didn't want to buy it at 427 yesterday. But at 342, this might be interesting. Okay, this is inside the near ecosystem. So for what that's worth. Okay, Matic is holding well. Matic may be making a bottom. Let's take a look at Matic. Somewhere in DeFi this year, there's going to be like a layer two season. Okay. So Matic is in a range between $1.48 and $1.38, right? They slammed it down and they bring it back. I mean, it's just, it's just a box. So the question is, like I said, Okay, right now it's two Eastern, right? That means you got, I don't know, you got like one, two hours left to deal with S&P futures. If S&P futures close and crypto doesn't rally, right? Look out below because people in equities may say, oh, I didn't sell enough. Let me sell crypto so I can go home and sleep at night. Then if people don't do that, okay, that might be good, might be, but they may do it again on Sunday. Because whatever's wrong with equities could also be wrong on Sunday or Monday. Because keep in mind, we talked about this a while ago. It's been a while since Mr. Putin has been able to sort of, right, manipulate the stock market lower. They tried that in the beginning. The joke in legacy was he's running the war. We're watching a Bloomberg terminal. So if this guy was ever going to pull a stunt to try to escalate this war over the weekend, you're probably going to see it Sunday night. Okay. All right, now, not to pile on late, but please hit that like button. We definitely need your support on that, okay? I don't have a big history of VEMP, although it is a nine bottom on a 90-minute chart. So that part is interesting. Okay, so this looks sideways. You don't want to see it below 0.095. Okay, because that would mean 0 0.064. So I don't want to hate on anything. This just looks like it's going sideways. Well, I don't think Putin is affecting the markets, but according to people I talked to when this war started, he was definitely trying to. Okay, he was definitely trying to. Somebody needs help with Cosmos. More and more, this is starting to look like a, a pure staking play 
to get airdrops. Although, like I said, you know, pretty impressive comeback here. Okay. Now the question is, like I said, if this was after equities closed, I'd be more excited about this route. Okay. So the whole story about be careful of big failed rallies. Now you have to be careful of small failed rallies. Cause think about it, right? You're looking at this candle. You're like, okay, everyone, I, every, I, you scared that you scared me. Now I'm scared. I ignored this and I'm scared. Okay. But now it's coming back. So I don't have to be scared anymore, right? I don't know. Okay. If this is a down market, if this is a bigger correction, okay, you don't want to be chasing anything or thinking you're safe prior to an equities close. Because if this rally doesn't hold or equities puke, then there's going to be everybody going, oh no. So hopefully it continues to go up. But if it doesn't, you need to react. Okay. Okay. I don't have C A L O on this system. And then I'm going to start wrapping it up here. Definitely appreciate all the love that's out there. Appreciate that. Okay. I can't find C A L O. Someone asking for Doge. Okay, so, you know, Doge is in the middle of its trading band on the 90-minute chart. We're all doing the same thing. We're doing this like DeMarc 4, and I've seen this a lot. It goes down, it goes to a 4, but then there's a bounce. Now, if this doesn't change the count, you're looking at five more 90-minute periods. So, you're looking at 15 hours of downside if this rally doesn't hold. Okay? Okay, OGN, I think this was actually on the token, merit, token metrics watch list at one point. Okay, so this has made the nine bottom below the trading band. Okay, so the last time you were, you know, it's been below the trading band all the way down. So again, with nine bottoms, is it a bottom or does it provide you with a counter trend bounce that you got to sell? before this thing turns around and goes. Now, I'm, I'm not saying OGN is going to turn around and go. I'm just saying you don't, you don't want to see, you don't want to see a DeMarc nine bottom get happy and then have it get wasted. Okay. Somebody was asking for helium earlier. Okay, so this does have the flavor of a turnaround because they really couldn't test support at 768. So if they're going to buy something, they may try to buy helium. Okay. Now, just keep in mind, though, you know, this resistance band on the four hour chart has been capping this thing for a couple of days. Okay, so the pink line, you can see it better, right? Helium smashed through and has not been able to recover. So if it recovers, the band is at 1815. So if it's above 1815, it's probably going back up to somewhere like 1887 or 1920. Okay, I do not think you want to see helium spending a whole lot of time below this band. Okay, because when it's done that, it's kind of like started a down move. Okay, so it's a mixed bag. Okay, whatever's going on on the upside right now 
you want to make sure it keeps going on on the upside. Okay, Litecoin for Taz, sure thing. Okay, support at 105, okay? So between 105 and 107, there's support. Litecoin's been in this band for a couple of days. Very interesting to see Litecoin and Dash doing well. That can be a blessing and a curse because a lot of times when these coins outperform, then the market turns around and dumps. I hope that's not the case. I don't know, man. I, I can't sell Litecoin below 100. Right, there's support down here at 105. Right, I, I know it's not the greatest coin in the whole world. There is res there is risk if it breaks 105.80. That's just how you have to do it. Right, that's you're doing this. If if it's a bear market, you're trading it level by level. You're saying, okay, here's support. Does it hold? No. Does it come back and test support? Does it get back above it? Yes. No. Okay. I got a bounce. Okay, everyone's like, okay, now I'll sell rallies and there's no, there's no rally. There are these intraday bounces that fail. Okay, now Litecoin's no exception. 105, 100, no one wants to sell there. I don't blame them, right? I can't believe there's no room for fast Bitcoin in the world. But if risk assets get wrecked, you need to say to yourself, okay, is Litecoin holding 105? Yes or no? The answer is no. And there's a problem with the whole, you know, with the whole system. Can token metric subscribers access the spreadsheet? Uh, no, that's altcoin overtime on, on the show for now. I am working internally to see how we could turn this into something that we can distribute, right? But when I, when I got with my research colleagues, it just became painfully obvious that the only way to make money in crypto is to try to find small coins that are rising both in their pro you know the fundamental story is catching on and the ai is picking up the technicals because trading in this chop i mean where's this going to get you right you fomo in like litecoin you fomo in it from 110 to 113 it looks like it's going to the moon and then they kill it right and now you don't know if they're going to take it back up or if they're going to kill it again not that i don't like litecoin and i would chart anything taz wanted to chart because he's OG on the show. But I mean, this is a recipe for going crazy with this range. I mean, you can hodl, right? But if you want to make money trading, we got to go to the small coins. Okay, people, that's it for today. I appreciate everybody. So let's go through what we're talking about. Right now, let me just check visually what's going on before we sign off. So equities are down 2%, okay? So stocks are getting hammered and ETH is holding. Who would have thought, okay? That's wonderful, right? Right up until it isn't, okay? So equities are a problem. They're probably gonna sell crypto after equities close. We've had a failed rally and that's bad. Really, all you're probably gonna get today so warning sign number two, right? You got the failed rally. Then the warning sign is do intraday upticks fail and do people freak out after equities close? If the answer to that is yes, you got the failed rally and you got freak out number one, okay? Warning. Then if there's freak out number two, which gives you strike three on Sunday night, okay? Then you have to GTFO. I understand you want to stay with your altcoins, but I do not want you to get wrecked, right? I want you to stay with the stuff and get the token metrics discount, right? They got the discount coupon. Let me give you the, the, the code again. So the code is EARTH25. And to be completely honest, I mean, yes, this does come from our marketing department, right? But I don't know how anybody's going to make money without that ratings page. And I think the low-end subscription, you can't click in like I do and see the details. But you can watch what comes in on the ratings page. And we will be doing this spreadsheet every day on the stream. 
you know, we're, we're warming that up. Okay, so be careful of strike three. Friday night, Sunday night, okay? Look for small altcoins, and whatever you do, don't get wrecked, okay? You don't know what to do. When in doubt, protect yourself. This is Bill Noble from Token Metrics. I will see you next week. Thank you.